I'm here today to review the 2013 fan film Halloween Evil Never Dies. I just want to point out that it shares the same name as Halloween Resurrection's previous title, which was Halloween H2K Evil Never Dies. But anyway, the movie is based on the original part of the franchise. It has no connection to the Rob Zombie reboot except the music. The movie is about these kids that want to throw a party in honor of Michael Myers' departure because he has not been seen since October 31st, 2002, which was Halloween Resurrection. And they're sitting in the dorm talking. And then the lady from WWAR comes on and she says that they're going to destroy the Myers house. And Michael Myers is living in some kind of basement. He's pissed about that. That they're going to destroy his house. Because the next thing you know you see him destroying things and slamming things. And he has to find something to cover his face. So what he does is... He takes a paper plate and cuts holes in it, and he makes a mask out of that. It was very creative. The movie is directed by Jordan Johnson, and I want to say, Mr. Johnson, if you're listening to this review, this is one of the best fan films I've ever seen. Michael was gutsy in this movie. He was so unconventional. He was so unorthodox. He was killing everybody. I don't care if you're black, white, man, woman. If you were there, you were going to be killed. And it's as simple as that. But anyway, Michael leaves the basement and he goes looking for a mask. And this guy comes up to him. And he's talking trash. Next thing you know, Michael just takes this. I, I think it's a hammer. I'm not even sure. And he starts beating him with it. And he takes the mask from him. Some time goes by. And there's a lot of filler going on. Filler dialogue. And there's a guy at the basketball court. He's shooting hoops. Minding his business. Michael Myers walks up to him. And he squishes his head. Randomly. Then more time goes by. This girl is driving along. And she sees Michael in the middle of the road. She's like, hey, retard, get out of the way. He kills her. But the, the thing I want to point out is she calls him a retard and then she drives off. Thinking he's not going to follow her, but actually he does. And she goes into a deserted parking lot. She gets out of her car to check something in the trunk. But when she gets out of the car... Michael Myers gets in the car, and when she gets back in there, he grabs her from behind like he did in the original. I like the fact that they tried to pay homage to all the Halloween movies, so I congratulate you, Mr. Johnson, for doing that. That was really cool of you to do that. I really like your fan film, and I like the fact that you weren't so uptight that you couldn't include Thorn because he actually included Thorn in this movie. Guys, I want to let you know that. To me, that's a true fan. Instead of bitching about it, he just included it anyway. What's so wrong with Thorn? Everyone is so uptight. Oh, no Thorn, no curse of Thorn. But he included it in this movie in a subtle way. And I appreciate that. He doesn't ignore any of the movies. He follows them all except three and the Rob Zombie movies he ignores Halloween 3 and he ignores the Rob Zombie movies as he should the only thing he used from Rob Zombie's movies is the music that's it and I don't really mind that but Michael is killing everyone he goes to the dorm room starts killing everyone there he kills this black girl on an elevator and then he walks out of the elevator so casually, as if he hasn't done anything wrong. That cracks me up. Then they're having a party in one of the dorm rooms. 
and Michael Myers goes in there and he kills all of them. I mean, he's slicing and dicing and killing them all. The one thing I wanted to point out about this movie is it reflects the stupidity of this generation. I don't know if that's something that the director was trying to do on purpose or if it's something that just happened to be there. And if you were trying to reflect it on purpose, sir, then you did a good job because they are complete idiots. They're completely stupid. They don't believe in anything. You could tell them if you put your hand in the fire, it'll burn you. They don't believe that. They have to physically see it happen. They didn't believe in the Myers legend and they ended up paying for it. So it was a good job reflecting that. Some guy had hired a man to play Michael Myers at the Halloween party. But Michael Myers killed the guy. So ironically, Michael Myers is playing himself. If that makes any sense. And I really love the fact that they kept emphasizing that this was 11 years after resurrection. Nobody has seen Michael since 2002. I really love that. I love it. Because they stayed true to the original story. I love that about this movie. And they let you know that it was 2013. This guy shows up at the dorm room starts killing everybody and my favorite scene in the entire movie is when he stabs some girl and then a dubstep version of Halloween comes on I think he either stabbed her or slit her throat or something and then it was like dun, 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 and it's like all dubstep and everyone's running out of the room screaming there's an old saying if something is not broken don't fix it but in this generation they think of it as if it's not broken then you should break it that's how they think of it in other words what I'm trying to say to you is they said that Michael had not been seen in 11 years he has not set foot in that house in 11 years so if he hasn't been there in 11 years why would you mess with that? Why? That's how you could tell that you made a good movie, Jordan. Because you got me talking about it. This movie was really good. And I really don't understand why they would mess with something that has been quiet for 11 years. I don't get that. But, you know, whatever. It's not for me to understand. I wish we got to hear more of the Halloween theme. But we didn't get to hear that much of it. And hey, you know what? That's okay. Because the main thing is, you stayed true to the story. They had Sheriff Brackett's son in this movie. He took over for his dad. I guess he decided to come back from Florida because they moved to St. Petersburg in 1981. And I guess the son decided to come back. So I really don't have a problem with that. And I want to point out that there is no mention of Sarah Moyer or Freddie Harris from Resurrection. And I find it very interesting. In these Halloween fan films, if they take place after Resurrection, they really don't say too much about those guys. And so I'm guessing that somewhere between 2002 and 2013, they probably moved away. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But there's one survivor left after Michael Myers killed everybody at the party. And Michael chases that guy all over campus. And then finally, Sheriff Brackett Jr. arrives to the scene and saves him. He shoots Michael a bunch of times. And when he comes back to look for him, Michael isn't there. I really like this movie. I have to say it again because you stayed true to the original story and to who Michael Myers was and is. And you emphasize the fact that he has not been seen since 2002. I love that because it's the truth. 
We haven't seen them since Resurrection. The other movies don't count. So I want to thank you for making that movie. I really enjoyed your movie. And I hope you make a sequel. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Johnson presents Halloween, Evil Never Dies. It was released on October 29th, 2013. I will be putting the link to this movie in the description box if you guys want to see it. I highly recommend you watch it if you're a Halloween fan. I'm the Michael Myers Fanatic. This has been Halloween, Evil Never Dies. And as always, I approve this message.